in March. California Congressman Adam Schiff is the top-ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. He's expected to become chairman of that committee when the new Congress is seated in January. Congressman, good morning. You good morning. are at the center of this House investigation to what's going on. We heard the White House press secretary yesterday say of Michael Flynn that his alleged illegal activities are, quote, don't have anything to do with the president. Is that true? Well, we don't know yet until we see with the full cooperation of Michael Flynn. Um, it's clear that he has been cooperating on three different matters. A criminal investigation, which I presume was the Turkish matter that came to light recently, but also the transition team. Uh, and that is, Flynn has said that he talked with other transition officials, including very senior ones, about his conversations with the Russian ambassador so that when the vice president went out on national television and misled the country about those conversations, there were senior people who knew this wasn't true. Mm -hmm. um, and he could shed light on that. Now, there's a substantial question. Is the president one of those people? Let, let me ask you, you, because you have broad powers to investigate and when you become chairman in the new year, who is the first person you want to call to testify? Well, I don't know the first person, but I'd certainly like Michael Cohen to come in uh, very soon. Uh, he clearly has a lot to say. Uh, in the special counsel's pleadings, it was clear that he had information that was of core interest uh, to the special counsel, uh, which means that it would be core interest to us as well as it goes to that, probably that conspiracy issue. Uh, so I would put him very much uh, near the top of the would list. Would that be a public hearing? Uh, it might be. Uh, we would want to uh, discuss that internally. Uh, okay. I think we're going to probably handle the witnesses on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on how it would affect other parts of the investigation. There are also witnesses who've already testified before the committee, and that tra those transcripts have not been made public. Will you be making those public early on? We will. Right. We will. Um, and it's, that's been a goal for quite some time. Uh, really, the first step, though, John, is we want to make sure that the special counsel has access to those transcripts uh, so the counsel can determine who may be uh, lying to the committee. And One of the things that's hard for people when they look at the totality of all the things we hear about in the news is to get some sense of whether we're seeing iceberg or tip of iceberg. What's your sense of the entire set of issues confronting the president and how much of it we, we know about? I, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, probably the best indication we have of that is how much is Bob Mueller redacting from these court filings? Uh, and in some cases, it's a great deal. If you look at the Flynn filings, for example, I mentioned there are three investigations that he's helped with. One is completely redacted. Uh, we have no idea what that's about. Um, it looks, because it's not a criminal case, like it's probably a counterintelligence case. Now, does that involve other foreign funding that went into one of the Trump organizations? Uh, does it involve this uh, nuclear uh, arrangement he was trying to reach with the Gulf? We really don't know. Uh, we also don't know what Michael Cohen has to say when he's fully cooperating or what other witnesses before Bob Mueller have had to say. So it's very difficult. I suspect that um, Mueller wouldn't reveal the most important information early in the investigation, so there may be a lot left to come. The criminal I'm, just, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to shift gears and, and ask yeah. you about Facebook. I'm sure you've read the latest bombshell report that the, the company was sharing users' data with other tech companies without users' permission. Given that, does it look like the company violated an agreement with the FTC? Uh, it may very well. I'm not uh, into the weeds on what that consent decree required. There, I think, uh, experts uh, much better uh, than I am on that point. But it certainly looks like the days of Congress essentially deeming the high-tech industry as off-limits, uh, you know, beyond the power to regulate, that these are new, growing industries that we don't want to constrain in terms of their innovation. Those days are over. They're behemoths now, they're well-established, and there are well-established problems, privacy being chief among them. Well, one of the other problems that's really come to surface about Facebook and the other social media companies this week was the other report mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the Russian use of their platforms was Huge. more extensive yeah. than we knew, mm -hmm. and that the platforms hadn't really brought to our attention fully uh, as they should have or cooperated with each other to uh, show us how they used cross, you know, platform uh, techniques to really amplify the Russians. Are you going to call the CEOs back? Including a specific effort by the Russians in order to suppress the African-American vote. Exactly. And exactly. use Facebook as a tool to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was very, very troubling and disturbing. Mm -hmm. Criminal justice reform on the table. It's passed in the Senate. Looks very well in the House. Is this a sign of things to come? Can the two sides actually work together? This would be a great sign of things to come. I hope it is a sign of things to come. There's no reason why we can't look for discrete areas like criminal justice reform and say, 
okay, we're going to have our differences on the yeah. wall and other things, but let's think about where we can come together. They're we crediting should. Jared Kushner. He's getting a lot of credit on both sides. Do you agree? Uh, look, I, I think you know, Kushner, the administration generally, deserves credit for being open and supportive of this reform. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been pe pe people in Congress working on this uh, well before Jared Kushner or anyone else uh, entered the scene. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. we need all three, uh, House, Senate, and White House, to work together on this. We should be able to do the same thing on infrastructure in the new year. Uh, yeah. The country certainly needs it. It's not a partisan issue. Uh, so let's use that as the template. We were in the green room and, and uh, your, your aide said that you had said we need to get to a place of comedy, comedy. <laughs> I'm happy to say there were a lot of people in the green room and nobody knew that word but you and your aide. <laughs> so what, do, what does that mean? Well, we probably have enough comedy coming out of Congress as it is, yeah. uh, or tragedy is more like it. Uh, comedy in the sense of getting along better, being more civil to each other. and. One of the efforts I'm going to make on the Intelligence Committee is to try to get us back to uh, some form of regular order uh, mm -hmm. so that we're more capable of uh, meeting the challenges that face the committee. Let's hope uh, so. Absolutely. Thank you, Congressman. Thanks very much, Congressman, for being with us. Comedy all around the table. <laughs> yes. C-O-M-I-T-Y. C-O-M-I-T-Y.